Good morning, everybody. I welcome you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Get comfortable wherever you are. And today I want to share a special word with you that God has laid upon my heart. Over the past year, over the past few months, many people have become stuck in a place of mourning, a place where they feel sorrow, where they feel sh sadness, and many people are actually showing it. If you look at people when you walk into the malls, all you see are people with the look of being defeated. Their shoulders are hanging. Their heads are down. Their eyes have lost their sparkle. They don't even smile anymore. And the fact that we have to wear a mask helps to hide the, fa the, the fact that we don't smile. We don't show any happiness or joy. And many people have purely given up. We have become stuck in a place where we, we were never meant to be. We were never created to be stuck in a place of mourning. Now, if I need a pick-me-up, I go right to the book of Psalms. Psalms are filled with promises. Promises of change, of healing, of provision, of protection. Whatever promise you need, you can probably find it in the book of Psalms. Now, if God kept his promises thousands of years ago to his children, we know he will keep it today for us as well. Psalm 30, verse 11 and 12 in the Passion Translation reads, Then he broke through and transformed all my wailing into a whirling dance of ecstatic praise. He has torn the veil and lifted me from the sad heaviness of mourning. He wrapped me in the glory garments of praise. How could I be silent when it is time to praise you? Now my heart sings out loud, bursting with joy. A bliss inside that keeps me singing, I can never thank you enough. God wants to bring about a few changes for us. One of the first changes we can read in Psalms 30 is, he will break through. The enemy has caused mourning to become a form of barrier for us. Our sadness, our worries, our pain, our fear has become a barrier. It traps us in and it keeps everything and everyone else out. But God will break through this barrier. And when I think of God breaking through a barrier... I see a picture of a wrecking ball that smashes through a wall. Now, when you look at the dictionary, it defines breakthrough as an offensive military assault that penetrates and carries beyond a defensive line. In other words, God is not just going to break through a barrier. He will launch an assault on the enemy. One of the second changes he brings is God is going to transform. You will transform our worries, our sadness, our mourning, the defeated looks that we have into a whirling dance of ecstatic praise. It will, in other words, it will look like you have something to be proud of. You will be able to keep your head up high. Ecstatic refers to an overwhelming emotion a feeling of being beyond self-control. You will be transformed from the sad, broken person to a person that dances with joy like you have no control over yourself. The best is God dances with joy over you. He takes delight in you. And he wants us to experience that same joy. Zephaniah 3 verse 17 reads, the Lord your God is with you. His power gives you victory. The Lord will take delight in you. His love, he will give you new life. He will sing and be joyful over you. God is not just going to transform you. He's going to give you a new life. Thirdly, God comes and he removes everything that is old. The enemy has come and also placed a heaviness on us. We were never, ever designed 
to carry such a weight. First Peter 5 verse 7 says, Casting the whole of your care, all of your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him. He cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. We need to cast our burdens onto Jesus. Not just throw it, but basically catapult all our worries, all our fears, all our anxieties that we have onto Jesus. And when we do that, we take his burdens and we can place it on us. Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30, we all know. And Jesus said, come to me all, meaning everybody who labor and are heavy laden and are overburdened, and I will cause you rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. God says he will do it, not just maybe, but he will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I am gentle, meek, and humble, lowly in heart, and you will find rest, relief, and ease of and refreshment and recreation and blessed quiet for your souls. He says, my yoke is wholesome, useful, good, not harsh, hard, sharp, or pressing, but it is comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. And my burden is light, and it is easy to borne. Fourthly, God will come and he will give us new garments. He will change the way we look. He gives us a garment of gladness. Now, whenever you get a new garment or you get a new outfit, especially the younger generation, you tend to want to show it off to everybody. Everybody needs to see this new garment you have. And it just, you don't just want to show it off. The new garment changes the way you feel about yourself. The more people see your garment of gladness, the more they will also want to have it. Isaiah 61 verse 3 tells us that God is going to come and give us new things. It says, To grant consolation and joy to those who mourn in Zion, to give them an ornament, a garland or diadem, of beauty instead of ashes. God will give you beauty instead of ashes. He will give you the oil of joy instead of mourning. He's going to give you a garment expressive of praise instead of a heavy, burdened, and failing spirit that may, they may be called oaks of righteousness, lofty, strong, and magnificent distinguished for uprightness, justice, and right standing with God, the planting of the Lord. God will do all this for us, just so that he may be glorified. Psalm 30 verses 12, I want to read to you again. It says, How could I be silent when it is time to praise you? Now my heart sings out loud, bursting with joy, a bliss inside that keeps me singing, I can never, ever thank you enough. This verse asks of us, how can we be silent when it is time to give thanks, when it is time to praise God? There will always be people out there that asks and tells you what is there to be thankful for in this time. But we have so much to be thankful for. If we just open our eyes, look at what we have already and what God gives to us and what he does for us, you always have something that you can be thankful for. But most of all, we can be thankful that God promises that there is a change that is coming. In closing, I want to leave three promises of God for you that you can find in the scriptures. Mark 11 verse 24 is the first one. It says, this is the reason I urge you to boldly believe for whatever you ask for in prayer. Believe 
that you have received it, and it will be yours. Jeremiah 1 verses 12 says, Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well. I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. Isaiah 65 verse 24 is to me one of the greatest promises. He says, even before they finish praying to me, I will answer their prayers. While people are out there praying for this country, praying for each other, God says, even before you finish praying, he will answer our prayers. Even if you forget everything today, I want to encourage you to remember just one thing. If we embrace change, if we are thankful for change, then God will bring the change. It will happen. We will see it and we will experience it. Change comes and we are going to be adorned with a new garment, an entire new outfit of joy. And joy is not just going to be happiness that we experience, but you will be experiencing peace, a feeling of being protected, feelings of being content within yourself, in spite of everything that is happening around you. God promises a change, and we can be thankful for that change. Heavenly Father, I come before you, and I thank you for the change that you are bringing. I thank you that once again, we as your children will shout for joy. That once again, we know that you are in control of everything. Father, we know that change will only come then we, the, the moment we start to embrace it. We know that change will only come if you make it happen. And Father, we thank you for this mighty change that is happening. We thank you for the mighty change that's happening, not just in each and every person's life, but in this country and the entire world, that your church is once again standing up more powerful than ever, that your church is once again taking its rightful place. Father, be with each and every person listening to this message. Bless them above and beyond. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.